Well, thanks for joining me today for another devotional study. Uh, we've been doing a mini-series through the, the four different Gospels. We've done Matthew and Mark so far, and uh, today we're going to look specifically at the Gospel of Luke. Now, Luke is significant because Luke is the only Gentile author in the New Testament. Uh, and he's significant, too, because uh, he has written more than a quarter of the New Testament. Uh, he wrote uh, the Gospel according to Luke. And then also the Acts of the Apostles, a uh, record of the birth of the church and its growth and uh, extension uh, into all the known uh, ancient world. And so Luke is significant in his writing because he highlights Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Um, a Savior for all peoples everywhere. Uh, now, a key word for Luke is the word salvation. Um, it is first mentioned uh, by Simeon uh, in the temple as uh, Jesus and his family uh, came for his circumcision. And there Simeon is a prophet and uh, he prophesies about uh, the Messiah, this little child before him uh, in, uh, in Luke chapter 2 and uh, verse 30. Uh, he says, My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. There, right off at the beginning, Luke mentions the reality that this salvation that comes through Jesus Christ is not just for the Jewish people, but is for all the peoples of the world. And this is no new news to the, to the Jew. Uh, it started back in uh, the covenant that God gave to Abraham, the father of the Jewish nation, where he said he would bless them in order that they might be a blessing to all the peoples of the world. And Jesus has come to fulfill that right now. Uh, and then there is uh, John the Baptist, and he bears testimony uh, to this universality uh, of, of, the, uh, of, of God's salvation. Um, in, cha in Luke chapter 3, uh, and um, verses 4 to 6. And John, speaking of himself by quoting the prophet Isaiah, says this, oh, He is a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, and the rough ways made smooth. Um, three of the other writers of the Gospels quote Isaiah as well, but only Luke gives this final sentence from the prophecy of Isaiah. And all mankind shall see God's salvation. <laughs> Luke catches that. Um, of course, he's being inspired by the Spirit of God to write it. But he being a Gentile, he buys into that. Oh, this is for all of us, for all people. This salvation uh, involves two things for Luke as he records uh, the work and the words of Jesus Christ. First of all, I guess in a negative sense, it, it involves the removal of guilt, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, Zechariah highlights this in his prophecy about his son John uh, in chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 1. Or, or sorry, Luke chapter 1, where um, Zechariah prophesies that his son John would give understanding of salvation through the forgiveness of sins. Uh, and then it is, it's, it's only Luke that brings out the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, it's really a parable of, of the overwhelming love and forgiveness of a father for his rebellious child. Again, the son comes repenting. And the father pardons his son and restores him. Um, and in the Great Commission, it is only Luke that uses specific terms uh, of repentance and forgiveness of sins to all people. Uh, Luke uses the term repentance more than any other gospel writer. Because repentance has to do with the past. Um, forgiveness is what the gift that God offers to us. Repentance is God's work in us to turn from our sins, to forsake our sins. And uh, Luke highlights this in the teaching of Jesus Christ, uh, the necessity of repentance, where 
an act of faith not only involves turning to Jesus Christ, but it means turning from our past, forsaking our past, and trusting in Jesus, looking to him and following him. So there's this negative side of salvation for Luke. But Luke also describes a positive side, an overwhelming, uh, glorious side. And that is the giving of new life through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Luke, more than any other gospel writer, mentions the Holy Spirit and the coming of and the promise of the Holy Spirit. And especially in his uh, Acts of the Apostles, in it chronicling the birth and growth of the church, the Holy Spirit is significant in that work on the coming uh, 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 promise by Jesus Christ before his ascension, and then the actual coming on the day of Pentecost, filling his uh, apostles with the Spirit of God, and then the Spirit being poured out on the Samaritans and being poured out on, on the Gentiles as well, and the work of God growing through the work of the Spirit of God uh, in giving new life uh, through the activity, the words, and the good deeds of the Church of Jesus Christ. Uh, Peter um, sums it up on the day of Pentecost where he, he says it is through the Spirit of the living God that you are called to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ uh, in Acts chapter 2. Now Luke is clear to emphasize that this salvation is only through Jesus Christ, only by repentance of sins and faith in Jesus Christ. And so it is the good news of Jesus Christ, but also to all the world. Um, Luke uh, uh, describes stories of uh, Christ coming to um, save the sick and the suffering. Significant to Luke is uh, many, many terms that, that are unique uh, relating to medical uh, stress and relief and uh, that, that none of the other gospel writers use. Jesus Christ came to save the sick and the suffering. Luke mentions many stories with women in them. Um, back in ancient times, women were second-class citizens. But Luke significantly mentions the activity of women, the witness of women. They were the first ones at the tomb. Uh, the woman at the foot of the cross, um, Jesus' mother at the foot of the cross, uh, and, and many of the activities that, that God did through women and for women in the New Testament. Uh, Luke mentions specifically the poor and oppressed. Luke is concerned with financial implications. Uh, he, he, more than any other gospel writer, talks about money uh, and the needs, the desperate needs of poverty uh, amongst a people and how Jesus reached out to them and, and cared for them. Uh, he tells stories of tax collectors and, and sinners uh, as a matter of fact, Luke records that Jesus had the nickname of being a friend of sinners. Um, he loved those who were rejected. Um, he, he, he loved the, the Samaritans and the Gentiles. Of course, this is significant for Luke. Um, there's a, there's a, a story where James and John are, are upset because uh, the people of a Samaritan village have kicked them out. And James and John with... Uh, kind of a righteous uh, indignation, say, Lord, do you want for us to call down fire from heaven and wipe them out? And Jesus said, no, 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 that's, that's not the way we deal with things. I came to save them, to redeem them. Uh, Jesus alone mentions the parable of the Good Samaritan, where uh, unbelievably, a Samaritan who was despised and rejected as a half-breed race uh, does what a Jew should have done uh, in keeping of the law. Uh, to, sh to show compassion on his fellow man who, uh, who had undergone um, uh, being beaten and robbed. Um, it is Luke alone that traces geolo genealogy all the way back to Adam. Um, Luke is concerned for all people, and the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ is meant for all people. God's love through Jesus Christ reaches all people in this whole world, especially the marginalized, alienated. Luke describes the breadth of God's love. There is no limit to who qualifies for his love. And that grace is for you and I today. 
Uh, friend, I, I, I don't know what you're going through. Whether you're suffering, been rejected, you're lonely, uh, financially strapped, um, desperate straits, help, feeling helpless and hopeless. Jesus Christ came to save you from the number one problem that we all have. And that's a spiritual problem, sin. And he wants to speak to that problem today. He calls you to repent of your sin, to realize that nothing in this world can satisfy. Uh, you may be at your extremity, and the only thing that really matters is life and eternity. Well, Jesus Christ came to speak to that and do something about it. And so I invite you to trust in him today, to forsake your sins, and to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Will you do that? And follower of Jesus, continue to look to Jesus. Continue to embrace him and to love him and trust him and obey him. No matter what your circumstances are, they are there for his glory and for your good. Father, thank you for these truths that we find in the Gospel of Luke. Encourage our hearts this day. Whatever uh, circumstance we find ourselves in, Luke, more than any of the other Gospel writers, shows us the breadth of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. There, there is no one excluded, no nation, no tongue, no class, no gender, no age. Jesus Christ came to die for all sinners, everywhere, at all times. And so we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.